Well, data-driven decision-making has been an effort uh, of ours in Minnetonka for three or four years. And one of our challenges that we've had is the time that it takes to bring the data forward, to get it to teachers' desktops, get it into professional learning communities' hands, and really use the data. Minnetonka's focus on data-driven decision-making, which is strategy 12 of our strategic plan, has made great strides in the last six to 12 months, thanks to two new technology tools, including the Northwest Education Association's computerized achievement tests and Turnleaf, our data warehouse. Well, this year we started to use the NWEA tests in the fall with students. We also use the MCA results to look into see how our students are doing at the beginning of the year and then where we want to group them for our small groups. Before we had this data, teachers really took a few weeks to just kind of get to know their students and to be able to kind of develop a feel for how the students were doing. And in the fall, when you did this, like you read 175 words a minute, so you have improved. We did an informal reading assessment at the beginning of the year, and that would give us their reading level, but it was very time consuming. It might take two or three weeks to get through every student in your classroom. A few years ago, we would have had to have teachers go to the office. They would have had to look through CUM files, which would have been records that were paper that tracked test scores, tracked grade information, and they would have had to look through that and they would have had to develop really their own assessment of how a student had performed. Today, access to the data is only a few mouse clicks away. I've seen a lot of excitement in being able to just go to one place to be able to get the information and to find out how quickly you can drill down to students in different groups, gifted and talented students, students that are in special ed, students that are receiving ELL services. Each of those groups you can quickly look at for your entire class and see how they are performing compared to other students in your class. This is a screenshot of what a teacher would see once they log into NWEA. On the left hand side, you can see that we have four subtest scores. Across the top, we have achievement scores that are grouped in scores of 10 points. So you can see how students automatically are grouped by their achievement scores, not only within math, but within subtest areas and in, in um, achievement score groups of 10. So for example, we have one student that is at the top of the class in number sense and computation. And they're actually performing a little bit lower than most of the class in functions and algebra. So you can see how the teacher could differentiate with enrichment activities for number sense and computation and in functions and algebra provide support. Perhaps the greatest benefit of our data tools is to ensure that no child slips through the cracks. Parents really liked it during fall conferences. I shared some of the information to them. They kind of wanted to know, is my child at grade level? Are they at third grade level? Are they, doing, are they learning what they should be at, in third grade? In addition to NWEA, Turnleaf, our web-based data warehouse, brings together Skyward data, MCA scores, common assessments, ACT and SAT scores, and high school grades to provide teachers a single source of data. Teachers can then take this information into professional learning communities to share best practices in instruction and interventions to ensure academic growth for all students. For example, we had one grade level in particular um, in one building that we had a concern about and did not make their growth target for our state assessment last year. We looked at the NWEA score that was taken this March and we are aware that now this class a year later um, still needs some review before they are ready for taking our state assessment. So it's provided us one more intervention, one more opportunity to work with these students before they take our state assessment. We've already looked at eighth grade students for this year and we've identified students that may have concerns and may be struggling next year, particularly in reading as ninth graders, and we're able to identify them for extra support so that they don't have to struggle. So that's been our goal is to get into teachers' hands, build professional learning communities in time for that so that we can differentiate with some data-driven sources of information. Not just I think or I feel about things, which is important anecdotally, but really examining the data that we have in a formative day-to-day -day way 
sharing with our peers, and then changing our practice. We're definitely making great strides with our data-driven practices and our technology has had a lot to do with that.